Okay, hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining today's webinar for the Master of Legal Studies program. So I'm Mary Klikowski. I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Studies at UCLA School of Law. Uh, thank you so much for being here, especially on a Monday. Um, so some of you who are joining us, um, you uh, are rejoining us to hear more about the update to the Master of Legal Studies program. So it is nice to see you again. Uh, some of you may be joining us for the very first time to learn about the Master of Legal Studies program. So it is nice to meet you. Uh, we will have a little bit of something for everyone uh, in today's session. But to kick things off, I guess we'll first start that, um, and I am happy to announce that applications are actually open. So applications for fall 2024 are open. Uh, it is It really is an exciting time um, when we start our application season. We don't know who will be joining us. We get to kind of know each of the applicants. We learn your stories um, and we help guide you through the process. So it, it's always fun to see start to see those, those seats fill up. So throughout the slides today, you will see a QR code. It will pop up on mostly every slide and that QR code will take you straight to the application request page. Um, from there, you can go ahead and request an application and start applying. But very exciting applications are open. Full 2024 recruiting is, is in full swing. Um, but without further ado, um, I would like to introduce to you all Assistant Dean Jason Fisk. He has the even bigger, more exciting announcement. Uh, Dean Fisk, please do us the honors. Thank you so much, Mary. And it's so exciting to be with you all here today. Uh, for for This is our uh, fifth year go now, this next August, uh, our incoming class will be our fifth incoming class to this Master Legal Studies program. But uh, we just recently got approval for our official launch of our remote and hybrid options here for the Master of Legal Studies program. Uh, so we are thrilled for this to be an option. We've been looking to do this for years. It's been years in the making. And here we are finally uh, with this being an option for you all and something we're very excited about. Awesome. Awesome. And I do have some questions here. Um, some of these are from our last session that we held and some of these have come in through a lot of students. So um, ooh, let me ask Dean Fisk. So how does the online hybrid option kind of fit in with why you say law um, kind of created the Master of Legal Studies program in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, years ago, when uh, UCLA Law was looking to start this degree, the faculty knew from years of conversations with people that there's so many more people out there who need and want to know about the law, but they don't want to be lawyers. And so thus, uh, up to that point, only those who were in the JD program wanting to become a lawyer through three years of full-time study had the option of attending a school like UCLA, a school of law, one of the top law schools in the country. Uh, so they, they knew that there was a discrepancy there. And so that's how that's why they started to research and go through the forming of this degree, this Master of Legal Studies degree, to provide accessibility to the law school while it wasn't there before for folks who could really take advantage of this. Uh, now, uh, we, we have done this for four years, very successful, growing each year with just amazing people in it. And now, with this program being remote and hybrid as options for students, um, this allows us to make it even more accessible to people, not just for those who can you know, drive to campus multiple days a week, which is the current setup, but instead, uh, those who live further away from campus, even anywhere across the world for those who want to do the remote program. And so this really enhances the school's mission and the objective of this uh, degree option. Awesome. So someone who is joining us for the very first time and maybe in the research phase of whether they should pursue a Master of Legal Studies degree. So to that audience, uh, why should someone pursue a Master of Legal Studies degree at UC School of Law? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, you, you've come to the right place. So as, as far as hearing about it and uh, UCLA being the one to do this Master of Legal Studies, the, uh, there, there's many different reasons why, why someone would want to come to our degree and thrive within, within our degree. And so one is learning the, the types of things you learn directly. So there's, you know, in a multi-trillion dollar economy, and not just across the United States, but across the world, the law is prevalent. And for those who, whether, whether you're a CEO in, in uh, dealing with regulations or compliance matters, uh, employment law issues, whatever your angle at it is, the, the law is pervasive. And 
gaining a knowledge where you can have a sophisticated level of understanding related to it really helps catapult you forward in directions that others without it won't be able to do. So, you know, the higher up the food chain you go within your organization, the more the law becomes involved. So this degree allows you to prepare not just for your current position of where you're at, but your next steps as far as when you when you are get up to management or if you're just or if you're in the manager now, you know, you not a single manager in the world doesn't have to deal with employment issues and contracts, negotiations, you know, all these types of things. And so that's the first one of the first benefits of our degree of our degree. The second benefit is a big one, and it is the the network that you gain through UCLA. So there is uh, directly in our program, it's filled with just extraordinary individuals with extraordinary backgrounds who have done extraordinary things. And each each one of them is a resource to you. So we now have year now a few years worth of alums. We have a passionate alumni base with our uh, MLS alumni council that was just started because they want they want to help you, you, the students and the soon to be admitted students into our program to succeed in all aspects of your career. So these are uh, some several of the reasons why people choose our program and why our program has really helped a lot of people so far, which is something we're very proud of. Awesome. And so we do have two ways of completing the program. So we have the full-time option, which is one year or nine months. You start in the fall, you graduate in the spring. Um, we also have the part-time option, which is two to four years. Um, you can complete the program anywhere there, just depending on your schedule. But 70% of our students are working professionals who are completing the degree on a part-time basis. So they can continue to work full-time and take classes on a part-time basis. Um, so Dean Fisk, how will the move to online hybrid, so how will that online hybrid option, say, affect a full-time student? And then separately, how will the online hybrid option affect a part-time student? Absolutely. So first to, to our full-time people who are considering the full-time program, there's really three types of students who we get usually inside the full-time program. They're listed on the screen there. The first is you know some recent graduates or somewhat recent graduates. Second, those who are coming in on F1 visa, we get several of those each year. And then third, those with the flexibility to take you know, a sabbatical or some time off work to focus on this program. We get a few of those each year. So this, uh, it, that is, and it is a full-time commitment. So some people are like, well, I can keep doing my job, right? And do this. Like, mm, no, that's not, that's not, that's not going to work. It's, it's the, yes, there's the classes, but there's, it's a significant time commitment to be able to knock this thing out in nine months, you know, doing the fall and the spring semester. Uh, and so with the online hybrid option now available, I'll talk about this more extensively later, but the gist is, is that um, there, the those uh, courses, uh, everyone has the choice of doing the core curriculum either remotely or in a hybrid fashion. And it's the elective classes in the, uh, you'll also have, a, some of them will be available in a remote. However, uh, for this next year, if you're a full-time student, uh, not all students would be able to do the uh, to do the remote or hybrid option entirely if you're a full time student because it's so condensed into such a time span there just wouldn't be enough classes in all likelihood. Now I'll talk a little later about there's an ex there's some extensions to that and you can talk to us about that. But in in general, if you're intending to be a full time student, you should probably intend to be here in Los Angeles to be able to do this degree because of the classes you'll have throughout the day and also significant ones in the evening. So that's for the full-time program. And again, knocking that out in nine months, two semesters. So that's, uh, which we have plenty of students do each year. Second, and our definitely our, the bulk of our audience is the part-time program. So our part-time program is for those who are working full-time still and, and doing this um, at on the side. And so the what the program will look like has a lot to do with you. There's a lot of flexibility uh, built in to really make it work for you uh, with, with your schedules. We've made, we may put a lot of efforts into making that sure, making sure that happens. So the gist is, is that you as a part-time student can choose either one or two classes each semester. You can choose them to be just in the evenings if you want. And this is the new thing is you can choose those to be online uh, in the evenings as well, or hybrid coming to campus one day and be online the other day. So uh, if you do say a couple classes a week, then you can expect a total time commitment of 20 hours a week. So that counts in class and out of class time. The actual time in class would be roughly around six hours of work a week uh, in class uh, if you do two classes uh, and about uh, the rest of the time, 12 to 13 hours of work a week 
outside of the classroom, totally out to be about 20. Now, if instead you just want to take one class at a time and just because you don't have quite as much time, great, you know, that would take one class at a time. That would be about 10 hours of work a week on average counting in and out of class time. And that, that would pace you to more like three or four years uh, to complete, which we have some students do. So unfortunately, fortunately, once you start the program, you, you're not locked into any one pace. You can adjust. And so if you maybe you start with one class and then you go to two the next and you can go back to one the next. And so there's choices, in that kind of flexibility. But that's generally the design of the part time program and how how it works for so many people. Okay. And then, so we've chosen whether full time or part time, and now we'll jump to the specialization. So we do have eight specializations under the Master of Legal Studies program. They're listed on the screen right now. Um, but Dean Fist, tell us which of the specializations are moving to online hybrid? Absolutely. So for, uh, for part time students, particularly, a good part of your degree can be completed remote or hybrid. Now, certain ones you could do 100% remote, absolutely do 100%. And that, those are the ones with the stars next to them. So if you're in business law, employment and human resources law, entertainment and media law, health law and policy, or law and technology, any one of those five specializations, you could do the whole thing remotely if you'd like. Um, you could also, with any of these specializations, you could choose to come to campus for some of the classes too. So if you prefer that, okay, great, you can do that. And so if you're in entertainment, for example, you could choose to take the elect some of the elective classes on campus if you'd prefer. All good. You know, the, the choice is yours. That that's that's how we've designed it. That you can have the ultimate flexibility for choices of classes. Um, if for the ones that aren't asterisk, the in environmental law, the government national security law, and the public interest law, uh, you can do a significant number of your classes online if you prefer. And however, there's going to be some that you need to do on campus because we're not we're not going to be able to put the whole law curriculum online. We're 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 being very laser focused on the most popular ones with our students. And so thus, if you're in one of those three specializations, great. You'll just need to be ready to come to campus for some of those classes. Now, uh, for general studies, which is a popular thing, general studies is not selecting a specialization because you want to choose, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that kind of mixed up and around. That, that could be totally online. You, you could, if you choose just the classes that are within the five specializations that are online, then you could be 100% online and be general studies. If instead you want to do maybe a, several public interest classes or whatnot and mix it around, then then those would be on campus. And so thus, it's, it's totally up to you as far as how you want to complete the degree. But that's kind of a little bit of the gist is that if this specifically matters to you, talk to us, e email us, connect with us, ask your questions. We'd be happy to um, help help guide your path as to what the best option is. Also, when you're in the program, we have you have you're assigned an academic advisor, and she is really great, and she'll be able to work with you to craft the perfect schedule for you. Not and yes, on the substance, but also on the scheduling time wise to give you the best advice possible to to work for you. Awesome. So just we mentioned diving a little bit deeper. So. Um, in terms of what a typical schedule could look like for, say, a part-time working professional, what they can expect in terms of their options during each phase of the program, because we do have three phases of the Master of Legal Studies program, they're listed here, um, but, but Dean Fisk, dive a little deeper into each phase and what that format looks like in each. Absolutely. So the phase one we call is the core curriculum. So all Master of Legal Studies are together in these classes. So with your cohort, you'd, you'd be with them through all the core curriculum classes, regardless of your specialization. When you apply to our program, it asks you the question, you know, would you prefer hybrid or online for the core curriculum? So note that is specifically for the core curriculum. So thus, whichever one you choose there, it says the choice is basically online, uh, prefer online, but uh, you have the choices of only online, prefer online, but could do hybrid or prefer hybrid, it could do online or can only do hybrid. So there, there's, there's a straight, there's the range of options that are available to you uh, on the application. But in the core curriculum, you, if you're doing online, then it would be Tuesday, Thursday nights, uh, both online, uh, starting at 630 and going till 930. If you do hybrid, then what it would look like, you'd be on campus 6.30, 9.30 on Tuesdays, and then you'd be um, online from 6.30 to 9.30. So that, that's what your schedule would look like for the core curriculum classes. Um, so that's regardless, if you're, that'd be both full-time and part-time, you're all together. And, and that would be your schedule for the core curriculum classes in both the fall and the spring semester. Now, for the 
um, for the specializations. So when you get to the electives, which is phase two, now that depends on what your specialization is, which, which I just discussed. But uh, for the part-time students, this would generally be your second year of the program with the first year being the core curriculum, second year being the, uh, the electives, if you choose to do it in two years. And the uh, if you choose one of the ones that can be done online, then you can choose just all your elective classes online. Uh, but really each semester you get to choose from any class at the law school. So thus, if there are maybe one you want to do on campus, one you want to do online, great. You can, you can select that. Each semester is classes that are available, whether they're on campus or whether they're online. And so that's that's kind of how it would work for the, the part-time student. For the full-time student, you'd be taking that the core curriculum, most of the several of the core curriculums in the fall, and then one or two of them in the spring semester. And then in, when we get into phase three, the capstone, that, that would be a class that's completed in your final semester of the program in spring semester. And that class can be done completely online. Uh, and so that, that's kind of the gist of what you can expect with the with the curriculum. Awesome. And now I know we have a lot of interested applicants that are in, you know, other states like um, on the East Coast or Texas or in the Midwest. So are, are classes, you know, are they live? Are they um, are they recorded? Will, will there be any kind of in-person attendance required for those that maybe just want to complete the program completely online? Absolutely. Yeah. And this this is going to be quite a few people. And that's why we've made it this way. So what, what we're doing for the program is um, is the is the orientation week, which you can mark down as August 3rd through 6th on your calendars. It's, that's that's uh, tentative. But those, those are the tentative days, August 3rd through 6th. That's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, that is on campus in L.A. for everybody. So regardless of where you're located, come on over to L.A., enjoy the summer in L.A., and uh, and it's designed for you all to really build up great relations with people uh, during that week, uh, during those four days uh, on campus together. Then we take those relationships that we form on campus during that orientation week. We take them online for the rest of the program if you choose to do that. And so thus that that's uh, that that's a great way to build the cohort and to meet everyone in person first and then then go online. And then the class times, yes, they uh, they would always be in the evening specific time. So they would be from the start times would be somewhere between six to to eight or so starting. And so thus it, it would Pacific time. And then so it would go uh, depending on which classes you take. So it would go from there. So that that's what you can expect if you're in the remote program and doing classes only uh, online. OK, and you mentioned cohort um, and people are always curious about who is in the Master of Legal Studies program? Is, is the Master of Legal Studies program competitive to get into? And what would you say to those people that are curious about who's in UCLA's MLS? Absolutely. Oh, and one other thing I'll note about the uh, about the on-campus requirements, I forgot to mention this, is that orientation week I mentioned is required, and that's in LA. The other on-campus opportunity is the graduation. So the graduation at the end of the program, that's optional. But of course, most people choose to attend because it's a great accomplishment. That's That, of course, is on campus and, and a, just a, and a really amazing experience. It's it's in May each year. And so that that is that is optional. So when people ask how many times do I have to come to campus, those are the times you, you have to you have to come to one. The other one's optional. Uh, but to your next question, as far as uh, who who's in the program and how competitive is it? Uh, it, it is it is a UCLA program, so it is it's competitive to get into. And uh, but but we look for a diverse range of students, and that that's something we think is a huge value to uh, the type of education that we provide. And 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 so uh, as you can see on the screen, these are some of the. Uh, statistics that we have for our class. So if the average age is is 36, but that's there's a huge range, right? There's there's a 19 year old in the program, plenty of people in their 20s. There's plenty of people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and even we've had all the way up to 72 in, as as a starting student, and uh, just a hugely diverse group. As you can see, we have uh, we have executives, we have directors, kind of mid level. Uh, Mid, mid level professionals but we also have entry level so don't don't shy away if you're if you're a recent graduate we 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 want we want you in this community as well and so everyone adds value everyone adds their perspective uh 32 percent have advanced degree already and so a lot of people already have my mba already have this perfect you'll fit right in like that that's very common for ours there's our our degree is so unique because it focuses just in on the law 
taking one single law class here or there from a different program is just not is not nearly the same experience as what you'd get here. And so that that's what that's what we do and that's our audience. Okay. And then so I mean you mentioned um network and community a bit, but it is one of the biggest highlights of the program that current Master of Legal Studies students kind of always talk about how um, that positive Master of Legal Studies community um, and the networking opportunities that have um, that have assisted them, you know, in terms of their career or their uh, personal professional life. But how will that sense of uh, community and networking opportunities continue to thrive in, say, an online hybrid environment? 100%. So as I mentioned before, um, that, that community and networks starts not just with the orientation, starts before our, we have events uh, lined up all the way from the point of when you're admitted all the way through orientation. So thus, there's lots of online events we hold for everybody between that time. There's even a couple on-campus optional events that are before that. And then once, once the orientation, everyone's there on campus together for those four days. And then uh, when the program starts, then we start holding regular events, uh, mixers, networking things online. We also have um, a, 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 several times a semester, we'll have dinner together for those who are in the hybrid program online. Uh, on, I'm sorry, on campus. And so there's lots of kind of opportunities for connection, whether you're online at only or whether you're kind of mixing, coming down campus and doing it online, lots of opportunities. In fact, in the alumni do a lot to connect with students too. In fact, just uh, I believe it was a couple of Fridays ago, the alumni held an event that was an, an Ask Me Anything. And so they had several panelists there where, where students could come and literally ask them anything. And so that's there lots of career, lots of uh, asking about how to network and, and advance their career in certain fields to our alums. And there's, there's just lots of opportunities for that. And that, that was done entirely online. Awesome. Um, all right, so I will let you have a bit of a rest here, uh, Dean Fisk, because I wanted to announce also about the scholarships because we did um, add more scholarships for this incoming fall, like fall 2024 um, recruiting cycle. So last year, the Master of Legal Studies program awarded around $750,000 in scholarship money. So this is, once again, in line with UCLA's public mission of accessibility to the highest level of education. So this year, we will have scholarships. You'll see it on the screen. We have scholarships for uh, university employees, healthcare workers, for those that work in uh, government or nonprofit sectors. We also have a means-based scholarship for those that need financial assistance or are facing financial hardship. And then we also have merit-based scholarships for those who, um, you know, have professional accomplishments. So um, we will continue to have, you'll see it on the screen, the Bruin Scholarship. Now the Bruin Scholarship, all applicants are just going to be automatically considered for uh, when they apply. And then um, students can also receive more than one scholarship award. So the scholarship opportunities that are there, you will uh, apply for those scholarships during the application. There is a specific call out and a whole page dedicated to which scholarships you wish to apply for when you are working on your application. Um, and for those that just apply by their priority deadline, which is November 20, you will automatically receive a bonus scholarship just for applying early. So just for applying in the priority round, you receive a bonus 5K scholarship. So um, really, if you are in any of the sectors or you have questions about scholarship, it is a popular question. I would actually just encourage you to come to our weekly advising sessions. We um, can chat specifically about, you know, your options. We can chat specifically about what you're thinking in terms of the program and which options you want to take. Um, and we can also dive a little bit deeper in terms of which scholarships uh, you want to know if you're eligible for. But uh, we have weekly advising sessions. We have four to five a week. So uh, feel free to join there at varying times. So dependent um, if you're on the East Coast um, or, you know, Central or on, on the Pacific, there should be a time that kind of works with your schedule. So um, that's the information about the scholarships. Again, come to an advising session if you want to dive a little bit deeper. On the screen now is um, information about the application requirements. All of it is done online. Um, you will, um, when you scan the QR code, it will take you to request the application. You'll get the, an email from us that also has a little bit more information to help um, prompt you. And we'll also have application tip sessions coming up in the next few weeks that I would encourage you to, to join if you are serious about applying. But another great place to chat with us is, is these, those advising sessions. Um, Dean Fifth, I did want to throw over a question to you, and it's a popular one that we get, and it's why, you know, uh, 
some people may want to wait until the new year to apply for our for our program. You know, it starts fall 2024. So they're going to wait to say January to apply. But why would what is the benefit of applying during, say, the priority round as opposed to waiting till next year? Absolutely. A, uh, there's definitely a, cu- a couple advantages. And, I, and I'll note also, if you're currently in, say, undergraduate or a master's degree, you can apply now. You don't have to wait. You, you can apply now, even if you haven't finished your degree. And we encourage you to do so. So, but the couple advantages are, one is uh, you you just know what you're doing already, like earlier, rather than waiting for longer to see if, if you're accepted into the program or not. And with that comes the advantage of being of being part of your cohort and building those relationships as early as possible. Because in February is when we start running events for the incoming class this August. It's it's a fantastic program, immersive program. And so it, we have lots of months of buildup of kind of, you know, getting to really know each other and building those super strong lifelong connections, uh, as well as preparing you mentally for the program. And that that includes um, how uh, how to fit in the schedule, fit into your schedule, and also knowledge as far as how to succeed in a law school classroom and to build foundations of law as well. And, and so thus, there's a lot going on. The earlier you're in, the more time you can take advantage of it. Uh, the second main benefit is what, what Mary already mentioned is a uh, $5,000 scholarship, this <laughs> bonus, if, if you're in or not. And so if you, if you prefer to pay more, then yeah, wait, wait until the, until the next round. So that, that's, that's fine. You could do that. But if, if you prefer to pay less then November 20th, uh, would get you that automatic, uh, $5,000 scholarship. And that's on top of any other scholarships that you would receive. So yeah, incentive there, bring money. Why not? Um, but the next, uh, so that's, that wraps up that. Um, Because I did include another exciting slide about something that we just recently um, announced. And um, this maybe you can tell us a little bit more about um, uh, the executive education um, at UCLA School of Law's executive education. Um, But more importantly, let's start with the Bruin Bites. Uh, They're coming soon. These Bruin Bites, they're free. What are these free sessions that we're talking about? Absolutely. So, so we're so excited about this, and this is something that uh, people have been asking about for a long time, and that we're finally, you know, uh, starting it for this fall semester. And uh, essentially, the these are some options for to learn uh, that are not part of any degree program. So these are not classes that you know transfer in or count as credit because you're not doing any assignments. You're 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 learning from the top law faculty in the world including ones who are part of this master of legal studies program. So the free Bruin bites that are coming up are essentially free sessions that are uh, usually around four, will be about 45 minutes or so on specific topics of interest. And so the first one on October 5th is called Shaken Not Stirred Protecting Television and Motion Picture Character. And so this it's really for those who are interested in entertainment law oriented issues. The second one on October 12th is Radical Empathy and Negotiations from Professor Ro- Russell Kropkin. Professor Russell Crofton has written books in this subject and is a worldwide expert in negotiations. And so if you if you do anything related to negotiations or will, highly suggest attending this. It's free. You can come on over. Uh, October 18th, the final, the final of the Bruin Bites is understanding employment agreements. So fantastic for those who are uh, in HR and those who lead companies and have employees. And so this is a fantastic session. All those sessions are completely free. And then now tell us about the executive education. Um, how does it assist someone that is, say, interested in the Master of Legal Studies program? Because that's separate from the Bruin Bites. Absolutely. So the uh, so several of these uh, all of these topics are uh, are very are specific topics of interest to people, and all of these can really help you know you build some foundations of knowledge coming into the program. You know, the more you know the more you're going to get out of the experience for master legal studies. Nothing we'll ever do on the exec ed could possibly uh, supplant the the experience in the master legal studies. The master legal studies is a totally immersive experience that can be life-changing for many people. The exec ed courses give people kind of tastes and flavors and and sub- substantive knowledge that can really build foundations uh, for of knowledge in areas and significant knowledge that can be of, of value as well. And so these are some other options. The three courses that are uh, that are on the right side are ones that are coming up uh, starting in November. And so they uh, negotiation theory and strategy as an example with again with Professor Russell Kropkin, leading expert. It's a two full days together of really going in, it'll be a small class size, very personal experience with him where you'll really gain some amazing skills 
on bumping up your negotiation, I would say a level, but it'll actually probably be three levels uh, from where from where you are today. Then the next is navigating executive employment agreements with Beth Burke. That's a full online class that's spread out over a few weeks that begins in uh, later November uh, that really dives deep, deep into, into these agreements. And so if you touch those at all, highly recommend that that class. Then finally, that's entertainment, the entertainment industry in the age of social media and new technologies. This goes over a lot of really interesting IP issues ranging from copyright. It touches on, hey, how AI is affecting entertainment industry and the law. And it's just, it's really recommended for anyone who's in the entertainment industry or uh, interested in the industry. So those are uh, some of the courses that are coming up uh, soon. And I recommend you register for those. In fact, for uh, we here's this uh, discount code for you all to to register for those classes as well uh, for uh, that that start on November. So again, the free Bruin Bites that link and the QR code you can register for for free for the Bruin Bites, and there's a discount code for you to uh, save some money on the exec ed courses available. Very cool. And I just, the QR code will take you straight there. And I also just popped it into the chat uh, for those that uh, want to click on a link. Um, all right. I, I think in terms of time, just being mindful of time, but we'll chat about the next steps and then we'll open. I can see people have uh, questions, but so we have uh, weekly advising sessions. So um, your next steps would, if, if you're interested in just talk, talking about your options, chatting a little bit more with us, uh, we hold uh, advising sessions four to five, sometimes five times a week again, at varying times of the day. So come on by, come to an advising session. You can talk specifically about your situation. You can have really one-on-one -on -one time with myself or Dean Fisk, but it's, it's also a great way to see who else is interested in the program and hearing about their backgrounds as well. So um, we also have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, an application tip session coming up. I know we are getting um, applications in. So for those that want to um, you know, get some tips um, while they work on their application session that's coming up on October 13, as well as a, an alumni panel um, that we'll have later in October. So registration for all of that will soon be up on our website. And I would encourage you all to, to join and, um, and um, listen to more about, you know, uh, what students are saying, what alumni are saying. Um, but to stay up to date with our information session, what's happening with the program, you know, to even hear these um, announcements that we've made today, I would just really encourage you all to follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, we do post announcements on there. We post events, we post panels, we post news about the program. Sometimes you post there first. So um, another thing that we do on our LinkedIn is we feature a lot of our students. Um, it is uh, a great way to see who is part of that community, who is a student um, in the program and all the exciting things that our students and our alumna are, are doing. So um, if you haven't already, uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Um, but really the most important thing for you all to do right now is to start uh, and start working on your application. Remember, November 20 is the priority deadline to lock in those extra, uh, that bonus scholarship. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we look forward to seeing who, you know, uh, starts applying and who'll be joining us soon for full 2024.